So this is the this is the official ribbon cutting. Oh, the official ceremony. ribbon cutting ceremony. Do I have scissors in there? There should have been scissors in that bag. In we which have a bag? name for this place. Don is Apiary. Um, Hope Beacon. Hope Beacon. Beacon. Beacon, that's really adorable. <laughs> so there's, there should be to make it sign. Can somebody bring, Kara, can you bring the whole bag up? Yeah. There should be scissors there. Otherwise, I think it's We won't have anything to cut that anyway. So I want to thank everybody for coming today. You know, it's been a real journey getting here. Um, if anybody doesn't know the story, it was my husband and I were spending um, every day in our 1,000 square foot apartment in Hoboken. And I wanted to make lemonade out of lemons. I wanted to figure out what to do during the pandemic that would make the best use of the time. And you know, um, my grandparents raised my mother in Patterson, New Jersey, and they always had a huge garden. We had a huge garden. It had to be, I don't know, it's from a, the, the mind of a child, but it was probably about 300 square feet. It was huge. And um, I had a garden on Washington Street in Hoboken. It was a flower garden. Um, and I've been, my garden was in the Secret Garden Tour in Hoboken twice. So this is something that was sort of along the same lines. It was something that I thought I could do. And, um, you know, I decided to take the class because for the first time ever, they offered it as a Zoom class. It was always in person. I could never get to it. So because of the pandemic, it was one of those things that was forced online. And when I was taking the class, I looked at my husband, who's in the back now, and said, um, you know, I don't want to just do this and forget it. Like, I want to try it. And so it became one of those challenges, right? I um, went around looking for a, a place that I could do it in Hoboken. And there are community garden areas, um, but the, the waiting lists were never, ever longer because everyone had the same idea. What could you do during the pandemic that was outdoors, healthy, not going to kill you? We'll get to that in a minute. Um, all these other things. And uh, so, you know, I couldn't get a spot there. And the funny thing about it, I think a lot of people don't know this and may not realize it. I've actually been coming to Vasa since I was about 13 years old. And I, w I was always the guest. Oh, this is, this is Donna. This is Donna. We're, you know, she's the sister. And, but I've been coming here for every birthday, 4th of July, Memorial Day, um, Santa Lucia, you know, you name it, I've, I've been here. I, as I like to say, I know how to sing happy birthday in sort of Swedish. <laughs> um, so I had actually joined Vasa a few years back simply because I wanted to give Vasa some money. That's actually why I joined. You know, it's, it's cheap. I said, if I'm a member, they'll send me a bill every year. And that's why I was a member. And um, so I said, I could probably, you know, rent a lot. And oh my God, I was able to rent a, a lot. So I want to thank the board, especially where's Jack? There you are. You know, thank you for, um, you know, letting me put my item on the agenda without notice. You know, I kind of showed up. Thank you for supporting it. Um, my, my idea and all the board members, thank you for letting me do this. Um, because it's a little bit off the beaten path, but I'm bummed. Um, I want to thank, she's not here, but I want to thank Landy Simone. She's the teacher of the class. When I told her that I was taking the class and I, I, I asked her, how in the world uh, can I do this without a backyard? I think she thought I was crazy. And I have to tell you, you know, I thought she thought I was just going to take the class and disappear. And uh, she, when I showed her an aerial of this spot with the, with the, with the river, the 90 acres of, I believe, of the 126 some odd acres that are untouched. She was all, all of a sudden, she sent a, a mentor out to see the site. And I was like, okay. I was like, why are they so interested? And I found out that Landy is actually kind of famous. She changed the law in New Jersey because she was sued by a neighbor who didn't want to have bees. And it went to the New Jersey State Supreme Court. And it's the reason why there's a state statute now so no local ordinances apply anymore. 
and it's because it's because the state of New Jersey determined that bees are in such trouble that we can't have local municipalities putting things in the way. And she, when I went to Texas in February, she actually they knew I, we we went to like a farmers market and people knew who she was. Wow. So she's an excellent teacher. She answered an unbelievable amount of questions. So one of the things that I have um, for everybody is I have some honey from her shop because I don't have honey, um, you know, yet. I want to thank Gino Day, who's the mentor from the program. She uh, she actually answered many, many questions. She was supposed to be here today, but, uh, you know, something came up as it often would do. Um, I also want to thank Errol for helping me with the lease. You know, thank you for that. Um, Terry, I think it's so sweet that you collected pine needles for me. It, they smell so good. If you ever have the opportunity to come oh, down when we're here, more. More. it's absolutely the most natural way to do it. And it was just, you know, really, really so sweet of you to do that. So thank you. Kim and Walt, thank you for checking on my deliveries. Where are you? You know, thank you for making sure that like, they didn't leave it in the middle of the driveway. Thank you for checking up when I was painting boxes in the middle of the night to make sure. I was doing that because I truly went down to the wire. A lot of people don't realize that. I, I finished the night before the bees were to arrive. And uh, well, that's not true. Five days before, you have to paint. You learn all kinds of things. You have to paint with five days for it to cure. Otherwise, the fumes could actually kill the bees. I'm sure. And if I'm not mistaken, the one that we had to swarm might have been the last one I painted. Oh, the first so swarm. Maybe it was still they didn't like stinky. it. They didn't <laughs> like the house. They left. So, um, you know, thank you for that. You've done that a few times, so you know I, I appreciate that. Make sure I don't. I wish Steve was here. Is Steve here? No. I want to thank Steve because in my delirium, I I had to clear this lot, and it was taking so long to get the landscaping paper and rock down that uh, it started to regrow. And Steve actually came and weed whacked the the yard, so I didn't have to like start, you know, all over, completely over. He actually cut this. And I want to thank him for that. Nice. Uh, Mark Renna, I don't know, uh, he he cut the, uh, you know, he was cutting the, the field last year. And uh, a couple of times he swooped in and cut this area. And I, I really appreciate that. Well, I think all of you know that Artie helped me cut down a bunch of trees. I think you all know about our foray with poison ivy. <laughs> you know, we, I was a Girl Scout. He was a Boy Scout. I don't know what the hell happened. So. <laughs> but... You know, it's funny, there was actually a report on a local Hackensack, Hackettstown site that there's actually a problem with poison hemlock, which is actually yeah. far more dangerous than poison ivy. So I don't know. But, you know, we probably cut down six trees. For any board members here, by the way, if you see the tape, that's, these are other trees that I'd like to cut down. <laughs> Please take a note. I'll be sending in a letter. Um, I, you know, I want to thank Artie and Chris, Chris for letting me stay at the house. Uh, I locked her out you know the doors are, are old and I thought I had opened it from the inside but again it's a very old locking me mechanism I pulled the door closed and then she was gone I couldn't understand why I couldn't get in and I'm like why did Christine you know lock me out no it was me I locked her out so you know thank you for that um, you know letting me store my supplies the tools let me borrow tools uh, and so on um, Ingrid and Ingrid's son for helping me cut down uh, the stump. Uh, Tim, who's not here, helped with the fence and I fried his uh, ohm meter. In fact, that's what I was looking for. I have an ohm meter for him. Uh, and we learned together that you actually need a special ohm meter for this, for this fence. So, you know, you learn a lot of things. Uh, thanking, I want to thank Ingrid for your hands-on help in transferring the bees. The, you know, I, I was sitting there worried to death that I would kill them immediately. Um, working in 90 degree heat and helping me select all the woodware uh, for the yard and all the supplies that I need. Um, I don't know if some of you might know that in the middle of all this, Eric and I finally found uh, a condo that we wanted to buy in Hoboken. We've been looking. There's actually not a lot of um, buildings that we would consider buying in that have the space that we want, et cetera, et cetera. And like, a collision course of priorities. Uh, we found the condo just as the bees were coming. So in the middle of all this, we closed on a condo. I sold my condo and I sold it myself because I'm actually licensed. And, you know, Eric actually, you know, picked up the bees 
and brought them here. Um, so I want to thank him for doing that and supporting me in, on this crazy, you know, adventure that I'm on. And I've I've loved it. It was hard work. Moments like rocks can a small bag of rocks actually weighs a lot. <laughs> Moving them around. Um, and, but I've had a great time, so I just wanted to say thank you to everyone for uh, helping me. So thank you. So I'm, I have some gifts. I'll hand them out individually. But other than that, I think we need to cut the ribbon, which is interesting because I don't have a uh, utensil. So we're going to go like this. I don't know. All right. Oh, Jack has something. Oh, Jack. See, Jack. <laughs> There you go. Okay. I don't know. I have. I, I don't know what happened. This is probably in the back of my trunk. There you go. Nope. <laughs> Easier to say. Hold it. Oh, God. All right. Ready? 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 You know what, I thought you'd tell us just a little bit about the beast. I will in a bit. Oh, you want to do that? Does sure. everybody want to know something about the beast? Sure. Yeah. 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 I'd like to know what's going on in there. Yeah. Oh, oh, don't be, they're, they're not interested in you. Party. Why don't you come over here? No one's, no one's doing it. <laughs> so, I should have also mentioned, does everybody see the names? No, we don't know. Where, where, where are those? So uh, this, I've named the queen. So this is Ingrid Larson. <laughs> This is, this is Ingrid Bergman. I know, I think this is funny. This is my mother. This is Carmela. Okay, so there's an Italian in the middle of all this, right? Um, Indeed. This is, I, I didn't know if this is controversial or not, but she's, because she's alive. This is Greta Thunberg, the oh, young okay. lady that, very good, right? And this is Greta Garbo. <laughs> so they're all, we have two Ingrid's and two Greta's. You know, you guys need a little more variation in your names. <laughs> you still need a name for her, Donna. The ones that get famous. You still need a name for her over there. Which, oh, yeah, well, you know, you have a queen without a name. Well, you know, she. Do we, have, do we see the queen yet? She's she's in there. All right. I honestly, she, was you're thinking, like she's, she's in there. there. We know? think it came from Ingrid Larson. So I was thinking about calling it Chris. <laughs> right. Certainly could. Yeah. But I think the next Swedish name I'm going to go with is going to be Re uh, Astrid. Oh, that's a good one. So if I, we had another swarm over here. So do you want to know what's going on? I'll tell you. So it's fascinating. If it's not too hot, I don't want anybody to get sick. Oh, no, it's fine. Um, but, you know, so I bought queens that were harvested uh, that are, and, and, and she gave me excess bees. That are not, they don't match. So sure, these are not her, the, the queens are not with their own offspring, okay? And it's fascinating. Does everybody know what royal jelly is? Have you ever heard the term royal mm -hmm. jelly? So really what that is, is a different mix of nectar and pro nectar. And it's, it's of higher quality. And that all they do is feed a female cell royal jelly. So it's fascinating. You can see a queen bee and there'll be all these attendant bees around it. And they will bring royal jelly to the to the uh, queen cells, which are bigger. They're typically at the bottom of the hive. And um, what happens when, when a bee swarm, Ing Ingrid, please correct me if I'm not saying this correctly. These bees were so healthy that they made so much brood and they didn't have enough food yet that there was a, and there was a queen cell at the bottom that was already emerging. They were creating another queen. So the original queen, is that the way it works? The original queen left? Well, they will decide when the when if the conditions are not perfect for them to all be in. They'll decide that it's time to split. They'll they'll create a queen cell. Lay, they'll actually create a couple of queen cells. Lay a couple of eggs in there. Feed them the royal jelly. Basically, the first queen to emerge wins because she'll go and kill the other ones. Okay. Just before she's about to show up to yeah. to be born. The current queen leaves with about two thirds of the bees, and that's your swarm. So that's really Ingrid. So then. They're the ones that move. Technically, that's Ingrid. Basically, she moved over there. Yeah, but that's all right. We're yeah. not doing it that way. <laughs> so, so that's really what's happening. We had a second swarm, which is really exciting. I loved it. Walt was walking down, and he's like, "Hey, Donna, I'm, 
I'm dying because I didn't expect this to happen so soon. I didn't have an extra set of boxes. I brought another set of boxes. I'm painting them out here. I don't know what I'm doing. And Walt's just walking down the street and he's like, there's, you have another swarm on it. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> We didn't get to it in time. What was fascinating is I called Ingrid. I said, we have another swarm. She's like, Donna, you can't handle that. Give it to Walt. Walt's son is doing the same thing. But in the interim, while I was there, I watched them all leave. And it was fascinating. You could see it as if it was, it looked like a bunch of dripping baked beans on the branch. And then it got bigger and bigger. And then it kind of went like this. And they just got bigger and bigger. And then they all just went in the same direction. And what's happening is when they leave the, the hive box, the hive, and they go to a branch or something, they send out scout bees that are looking for another place where they can go, like a hollow tree or whatever. And <coughs> as, when that bee comes back and says, yeah, I got a good spot, it, they actually do something called the wiggle dance or the waggle dance, and they tell the other bees where it is through this communication, which is wild. And then they all leave in a matter of 15 or 20 seconds. I wish I had gotten a picture of it. So that's what I'm doing up here. So now they're all, it's, it's hot out, um, they have to face east, so the entrance is east, because when the morning light comes up, that actually heats up the hive, and they know it's time to go out and get some work done. And as it gets cooler, they will all go in the hive. So when you move bees around, that's one of the reasons why they were boxed up and the plug was plugged up, so that they wouldn't leave, because otherwise they wouldn't know how to get back. When, when Eric brought the travel box. Uh, what else could I tell you? Donna, quick question. Sure. Are those bees so busy, busy bees, that they won't attack you when you're standing there? They're not interested in me. <laughs> the funny part is, is you do get, you can't eat, oddly yeah. enough, you can't eat bananas. I don't, no one, I don't really understand that. But if you eat bananas, they want to attack you. So oh. they could smell it. Oh my God. So you can't eat a banana before you come here. <laughs> um, and funny thing is, if one of them stings you, then it does send a signal to the rest of them. Oh, so really? Coming to sting you? Yeah, so as oh long as you're not stung, you're fine. Oh. 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 And they're not interested in me. No, that's well, she's not, she's right there. No, yeah. they're, they're all outside, like on the yellow box. Yeah, all but out. they're all doing stuff. They don't care about yeah, they, that. Yeah, they're, they're all trying to, like, do their busy work. They all have different it jobs. Cold, and then they, they just go that. into the, the pool, bees? and then they go into the box. <laughs> when they first are born, are they are they are they caretaker bees or the first bees or the last bees? The last the last job. Busy bees. Busy bees. What's the first job? There's like the there's the cleaner bees. There's bees that actually call them undertakers. They take out bees that die for inside the hive. That, that's oh, their job. Oh, all right. So that's caretaker bees. <laughs> yeah. So the, so so the female bees when they're first born, their job is to keep keep house. They clean out the cells when new bees are born. They'll clean out those cells so the queen can come and lay a new egg in there. Mm. Um, they'll get, you know, take out the dead. Bees, interestingly, will not go to the bathroom in they their hive, push. and they don't die in their hive. They will fly oh. out and die elsewhere. Wow. But when you're in there working, sometimes there's a little collateral damage that just kind of goes along yeah. with the, uh, you know. What's um, funny is they'll literally drop right out of the sky. They could be flying dead. Oh, they work until they die. They know. The, okay. ma wow. the male, the male bees, the drones. <laughs> their job basically is to keep the hive at the right temperature. So in the summer, you'll see the bigger bees. They'll be down around the entrance, and they'll just be sitting there and flapping their their wings really hard. And that's bring, you know bringing all of the, the oh. cooler air, the outside air, in to keep the temperature right. Mm -hmm. The bees will not cap their honey until it's the perfect percentage of water, which oh. is like between like I can't remember exactly now, but it's like somewhere like between 15 and 20 percent water. And when it gets to that perfect um, percentage of water in there, they cap it off. Honey is is like one of the only perfect foods. It will last forever. Like yeah, yeah. forever. Like in Egypt, they found honey doesn't go bad. But so that's the drone's job. Once the once the once the um, once the female bees start to get a little bit older, they'll come out and they'll start doing their their practice flights. A lot of times, you'll just see bees kind of like flying around. They're just kind of getting their wings on. Then they start and they go and they forage. The males don't go out and. It's all females that go out and collect the honey or the nectar. Of course. But come winter, 
All the males get booted out and you're gone. Die. the females stay oh, over die. Winter. Oh, I think so. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> the male and I hate down. to tell you right, that when a new queen, so now we have it, we have a new queen that'll come out. Once she's ready, she's going to come out and she'll do her flying, her, her mating flight. And then all the males will come and it's one and done <laughs> for three years, two to three years, right? Two dead. Years. Yep. They just drop dead after they've, uh, had their fun. The male does? Wow. Yep. Is that the lifespan, two, three years? Uh, is everybody no. hot? I'm worried it's about it. Queen everybody. only. No. Oh, oh queen only. <coughs> queen only. Any of okay. Is everybody all right? I'm just worried about the temperature. No. no. Oh, okay. okay. And how, how do you harvest the honey? Oh, that's, don't know exactly. No, I do. <laughs> you take out the, we're going to do that together. You should have seen the face when Ingrid told me that I needed a place that is completely sealed. Because I thought foolishly that I could do it out here. And apparently oh. they'll all go after me because I'm taking their food, right? <laughs> but uh, you take out the panel of honey, and you or there's ways to uh, separate the bees from uh, the honey, uh, the honey frames. There's frames in there, and you put it in a spinner. So <laughs> you and it's it, yeah, and you can. Uh, I have this tool that I bought. It's a heated knife, and it takes off the top uh, cap. Uh, and then you put it in the spinner thing and you spin it. You, you, and I found out more recently because I'm watching videos is that there's these other tools that you can buy that's like a roller with prickers on it and it just pricks a hole in it. So I found out that the hardest thing for the bees to make is actually the wax. The honeycomb is actually takes up the most energy. Wow. So, so commercial. Can they reuse that wax? Yeah, I could. In fact, I was thinking of uh, Stitch and Bitch <laughs> <laughs> because we can make soap. We can make candles. But you don't put the wax back in the hive. No, but the they bees have got to recreate it. it. Yeah, so okay. if you want your bees to make the most honey, yeah. they you try not the to destroy honey. that. Because right. you can and put it back in. You put it back in. And, and they repair they it. it. They, they will come in and they'll repair it. They'll clean out all of the honey that's, that's in there. The excess, yeah. And they will repair the comb that gets damaged during okay. harvest. Wow. Okay. So are you going to take half of the comb, comb and keep it in there and have to take away for your soap and stuff? I no. think at the beginning I'm just going to take a little bit of honey and slowly learn <coughs> from Ingrid and that. others how much I can take without, you know, this is, these are all the things that I'm going to learn. I feel like I'm on this journey. I decided to learn about this. I said to my mother-in-law, I decided to do something crazy and I decided to do something hard and I did it. As usual, for someone that has known her for 25 years, probably. <laughs> and, you know, it was well, crazy. I looked at the, I looked at it when all the trees were up. I'm like, do you really want to do this? <laughs> you know, but I oh, did. Careful. That's right. Donna, tell us about all this electrical stuff. Well, it's a giant taser. It's a, so far, Christine has put her hand on it about five times. <laughs> it's on, and she calls me up and says, it's not working. <laughs> and so um, it's, it's. Uh, it's an electric fence. I, I, it's not working the way I want to. The, the bottom one has high resistance, which means that something is shorting it. Um, the, basically, it gives them a little tiny shock. I felt it. It's not. It's nothing. It's, it's just not for the bees, though. It's for the bear. Right, but it's an, <laughs> it's just enough to say, this is scary. That's it. Okay. It's not more than like a dog fence. Yeah. It's powered by that solar panel, obviously, yeah. well, right there. Yeah, that may be enough. No, it. Well. I might actually, that's the one thing, is I've had uh, quite a number, I, I've had the uh, video to Agritronic, I've had two electricians, Tim was one of them, blew up his own meter. My cousin came out and looked at it, and they're like, there's nothing obviously wrong with it, so we don't know. I did have a branch that fell down and hit the bottom one, and that would be enough to short it. I do have oh. to clear this area, as you can see, look how fertile this land is. Yeah, yeah. I have to clear this and keep it clear because if that brush hits the, the fence, it does short it. So, um, you know, that was one of the things I had to figure out, you know, like I bought the fencer, did the research on the fencer, and then the fencer usually comes with instructions and diagrams. So it was a project. You need a weed burner. I'm going to get you one. A weed burner? Yeah. What is it's that? it's basically a blowtorch on a long stick. Yeah. You, you, <laughs> oh, he he gets more not, toys. But it's not <laughs> pesticide. Oh no, you can't use pesticide. No. So you just burn the weeds yeah. oh, yeah. selectively right. as they come up. It's easy to do. 
and it won't hurt the bees. Cool. Well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> another toy. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, so um, what else can I tell you about? That's it. So, uh, Donna, when when do you think honey will be produced? Maybe September. You're gonna take no, okay. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. The first year is usually them really kind of establishing themselves. You don't want to. You don't want to take. They establish residency. They, they, <laughs> maybe they time for you to... to... in November. What's, oh yeah, that's right. Wouldn't it be fun when they, if I have little stickers that say Ingrid Larson and <laughs> Greta <Yeah>. Garbo? <laughs> <laughs> which which queen would you like? <laughs> you know. Yeah. yeah. And I I think it would go very good with the farmer's cheese and garlic. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Air it. Good combination. I told you, I know, I know this much about, you know, yum, yum hula veda, you know, <laughs> yum yum drakalor. Well, all those bees are going to be, all well, those bees are going to be Swedish, so. They're, they're they're that's Swedish, right. Swedish mm -hmm. land, right? Right. But, um, Terrific. um, yeah, and that's it. Uh, any other questions that I can answer? Yeah. Can I take some pics? Come on, everybody, I want to take some pics. Sure. Would you mind taking a picture? Not at all. Be the picture person? Yep, you got it. Oh, okay. Come on, Eric. Everybody. Just everybody. Are you afraid to stand here? No, no. Why don't they go down that way? We don't